Welcome to an introduction to the world's religions. Today we begin our unit on Islam. Group names foster group identity. When you see people trying to distinguish themselves, naming and name calling serve as signposts for social politics. Islam is a good example of this, but to see it you must recognize the name's historical context. Islam developed in the 7th century on the Arabian Peninsula. Situated between Africa and Asia, its coasts sat along prime trade routes. The region's many tribes competed for economic and political dominance. These routes also provided access to knowledge and traditions from outside the region, so the peninsula was rich with ideas, foreign and domestic. We see this in the city of Mecca, a central city where peoples gathered for all sorts of exchange. The city even had a place for all the people's deities to reside, called the Kaaba, a massive stone cube. Now you prob probably know that these places, Mecca and the Kaaba, get repurposed for Islamic use, but keep in mind that Islam has not yet come on the scene. This is the world in which Muslims will come to define themselves, and they do this under a man named Muhammad. According to tradition, Muhammad was born in Mecca around 570 CE. He was part of the Banu Hashim clan of the Quraysh tribe, so he had a fair-to-do pedigree. But times were tough on the trade front, so he was not at all a wealthy man. Muhammad was orphaned at a young age and lived with his uncle. They caravanned all around the peninsula and beyond, trading with people from all over. By adulthood, he picked up the reputation of being an even-handed merchant, living into his name, praiseworthy. Muhammad recognized that the big city brought with it lots of strife. He had become economically successful precisely because he was able to rise above disagreements. For a few weeks each year, he would get away from it all by retreating to a cave outside of Mecca. In 610, his quiet and prayer were interrupted by the voice of the angel Gabriel, commanding him to be a mouthpiece of God. He was to be one who recited and made clear what God told him. This drove him crazy, but his family and friends seemed encouraged by the wisdom he shared, so much so that they wrote down his recitations in what was later collected as the Qur'an. Muhammad's recitations were to be the last word on what God wanted of all people, so that they could know Islam, peace. Those who faithfully submitted to their message were known as Muslims. Muhammad's message of peace endeared him to some Meccans, but eventually naysayers ran him out of town. They traveled throughout the region, seeking refuge, striking alliances, and gaining followers, wherever they could, including the Arabian city of Medina, and even the Christian kingdom of Ethiopia. Eventually, they were able to mount an assault, and take Mecca, and unite the tribes under Islam. Muhammad died of a fever in Medina in 632, but his followers carried his teachings and political holdings, changing the world to this day. When we think of Islam, we should consider all the ways this religious tradition has sought to bring peace to people. It's unified people through the spread of its sacred language. Arabic has helped mediate exchange all over the world. And it's inspired the scientific imagination, not only in West Asian places like Saudi Arabia and Persia, but also in Europe. Islam helped midwife the European intellectual rebirth known today as the Renaissance. And during the so-called Dark Ages, Europe had sworn off a lot of non-Christian Greco-Roman thinking. And a lot of ancient scientific and mathematical texts were thrown off bookshelves to make space for the Bible. Nostalgia for those texts came after wars and plagues devastated the continent. But where could Europe get new copies of old texts? Remember that Islam grew along a trade economy. They had the ancient philosophical, mathematical, scientific, and mystical treatises that the Europeans had sought, and Muslims had been building upon them. This is why English has retained words like algebra, which comes from the Arabic al-jabr, for restoration, alcohol, the substance resulting from a chemical reaction used for cleansing, and other purposes, alkaline, a set of base chemicals, which you know of from batteries. A convincing case could be made that just as Christian Europe warred with Muslims, Christian Europe would know little of peace without them. Islam is one of the world's largest religions, as well as one of its fastest growing. If the human condition is one of strife, then the promise of peace is clearly an enticing one. 
As we enter into a study of Islam, let us carefully consider what does peace, salam, look like for Muslims in different situations? What does struggle, jihad, look like for different Muslims? And if Islam is adept at a group identity, who for better or worse gets left on the outside?